Marking the second anniversary of the Second Lebanon War, Israel still awaits the return of Eldad Regev and Udi Goldwasser taken captive by Hezbollah. The army claims the lessons of the war in which 158 soldiers and civilians were killed have been learned. Field training of the different units has increased and millions of shekels have been poured into enhancing the power and effectiveness of Israel's fighting force. Hezbollah, meanwhile, has improved its capabilities. Its arsenal of long- and short-range missiles number over 40,000, and its operatives are slowly creeping back to the Shiite villages in southern Lebanon. Former senior intelligence officer, Brigadier General Reserves Ephraim Lapid, discusses with InfoLive TV the situation two years on. The war two years ago was a war with Hezbollah. It was not with Lebanon as a state, it was with a terrorist organization, which is a totally asymmetry war. Israel, the government, the military system, and even many other civilian organizations, we studied the lessons from this war. I'm not expecting any war in the near future, but if, God forbid, we, we should have this chance, I'm sure that we are much more prepared now. The prisoner swap with Hezbollah is expected to be implemented in the coming days, but the price Israel will pay for the return of its two IDF reservists has been the cause of controversy in Israel. There are those who believe it is wrong to agree to the return of the two soldiers believed dead in exchange for the release of a live arch-terrorist and the bodies of Hezbollah fighters. Others believe our soldiers must be brought home, whatever the price. We have to do all in order to bring our soldiers back. Uh, these are uh, criteria with, uh, out, uh, with, without any moral aspect. When we had to fight with, uh, with states like we did it uh, in the past with Egypt, with Syria, with Jordan, the exchange of prisoners uh, was according to the international law. Now, we are in, in, a, in a process of bargaining. It's very bitter, it's very unhuman, but that's the, that's the reality. And uh, I think that uh, we have to back the government in its uh, very sensitive uh, decision to bring the soldiers back in a reasonable price. And I think that uh, the price, after all, is a reasonable price. Israel failed in its efforts to learn of the fate of Air Force navigator Ron Arad and the three soldiers missing from the Battle of Sultan Yaakov in the First Lebanon War. Lapid believes the Jewish state has done everything possible, but the fact that it has failed to achieve results in these cases proves that it's not done enough, he says. I don't remember any other case in the history of wars that uh, more than 22 years a country like Israel is searching uh, one soldier, one very important soldier, but one soldier without any effective uh, results. In the history of Israel, we have uh, almost less than 200 missing soldiers from the War of Independence until uh, uh, Ron Arad, excluding the three soldiers uh, the two in Lebanon and uh, Gilad Shalit in, in Gaza, that I think that is going to be uh, solved. We don't remember those uh, who are missing uh, from uh, the, uh, independence, the War of Independence and the Attrition War and the Yom Kippur War. We speak only about uh, the last from uh, the, the uh, battle in Sultan Yaakov, which was also, of course, a very bitter case. The UN Security Council Resolution 1701 that brought an end to the 34-day-long war has proved ineffective. Our two soldiers have yet to be returned home. The flow of weapons and funds to Hezbollah from Iran and Syria continues uninterrupted. Hezbollah has succeeded in replenishing its arsenal threefold since the war and has formed a well-skilled fighting force. A resolution of the UN generally is a very high target 
and uh, I can't remember any resolution that was a, a comprehensive solution for a, a certain crisis all over the world. I think that uh, one of the very important benefits of uh, Resolutions uh, 1701 is the involvement of Europe. Now, France, Germany, and other European countries, but uh, Europe as uh, an entity, the European Union also, and, uh, and NATO, uh, are involved now in the Middle East more than they were in the past. Multinational force, I think that no one believed really that uh, this force could be a factor to prevent totally smuggling of uh, armament uh, to Lebanon. But I think that even the symbol that uh, Hezbollah sees also, that UNIFIL in Lebanon is a factor that they can't ignore. In the event of a war breaking out in the north where Israel will find itself under Hezbollah rocket fire, Israel will not restrain itself as it did in the past, says Lapid, adding that he doubts Syria will want to become involved in the event of another war with Hezbollah. We will uh, act very, very uh, uh, strong against Hezbollah and any other target. We limited ourselves in the past not to hit uh, targets that were not directly uh, uh, connected with uh, Hezbollah. They know that uh, Israel in the future will not react uh, the same. Uh, there is a possibility that Iran or even Syria may join in. Syria is a very, very weak country now. That's not Syria that we knew from the past. We can also see the initiative of uh, President uh, Assad uh, to uh, negotiate with Israel, not because he is now a, a Zion lover or a, a new friend of Israel. He understood from his interest that uh, uh, he has no chance in any military conflict with Israel. I think that we have to pay attention, of course, to Iran. Hezbollah is strengthened directly and permanently, financially and military, of course, also politically, by Iran. And, uh, and of course, we have to take it into account. Hezbollah is a force to be reckoned with, and as long as it continues to enjoy heavy Iranian funding and support, it will continue to pose a real threat on Israel's northern border. While officials in the military and government echelon claim the lessons of the Second Lebanon War have been learned, one can only hope that Israel will not have any reason in the future to put their words to the test.